guys welcome back to my channel i'm kristen also known as lovely kristen i am a fourth grade special education paraprofessional and i'm in school to be a teacher i will be certified to teach k through eighth grade whenever i finish school so yes guys welcome back i am finally back with another video today's video is going to be a requested video um, this video was requested by a few of you guys wanting paraprofessional tips so i was asked by a few of you guys to give tips on you know becoming a paraprofessional or being a paraprofessional so i definitely wanted to do that for you guys um it's such a fun job and any way that i can educate you guys i you know i'm all for it before we get into the tips i did want to just give a little bit of background on paraprofessionals who we are what we do and um, specifically what I do for those of you who may be new here or for those of you who um, don't really understand what it is that I even do as a paraprofessional, right? So first I wanted to start by saying that paraprofessionals are sometimes called instructional aides, teacher assistants, and paraeducators. So those are all the names or titles that you may hear depending on where you work, depending on the district and all of that stuff but they all mean the same thing. So they're just different titles for like the same thing, right? We are not certified teachers, but we are educated professionals who work alongside and under the direction of a certified teacher or school professional. So we provide support to students inside and outside of the classroom. And that support will vary depending on what your specific job role is. I know for me, I provide mainly instructional support to students inside and outside of the classroom. Basically, I support students inside the general education classroom who receive special education or related services. I work with specifically, like I said in the beginning, I work with fourth grade and I rotate between the two grades, the two classes that are the inclusion classes. So inclusion classes are just classes that, general education classes that include students who receive special education. Some paraprofessionals may provide instructional support. Some paraprofessionals may provide behavioral support. Some may provide language support. It just depends. And like I said, that understood article, did I mention anything about the understood article? I don't think I did. So I will link the article um, from understood.org that really explains who paraprofessionals are, what paraprofessionals do, and just the different types of support that paraprofessionals provide. It's on understood.org and I will be sure to link that article for you guys. And I will highly recommend that you check it out if you just want a little bit more um, in-depth information about the different types of support that we provide. So now I'm going to get into the tips. So my top five tips that I have, and I may do more tips later on because I am still learning. This is only my third year working, third school year working as a paraprofessional. So, you know, I'm still learning as I go. So I will be open to sharing more tips and more things that I am learning as I go along. But these are just my top five tips that I feel are very important and just things that come to mind when I sat down and really thought about what is important for paraprofessionals to know, do, and understand about our jobs. So my very first tip is to really understand your job responsibilities. So if you see me looking down, it's because I have my handy dandy notes here that I'm just referring to to make sure I don't forget anything, okay? So for my very first tip is you really want to understand what your job responsibilities are. So just like with any job, when you apply for a paraprofessional position, there will be a list of job responsibilities. So you wanna make sure that you read over that very carefully so that you really understand what it is that you are going to be doing on a daily basis. Because not all paraprofessional positions are the same. I started as a one-on-one -on -one 
special education paraprofessional and now I am a special education paraprofessional that works with different students. So my day to day obviously looks a lot different from how it did when I was a one on one special education paraprofessional. So you really want to be clear on your job responsibilities. When you go in for the interview, ask questions like what will my day to day look like as a such and such paraprofessional if you're a kindergarten paraprofessional ask what will my day-to-day -day look like as a kindergarten paraprofessional what will my day-to-day -day look like as a pre-k paraprofessional as a special education paraprofessional that is going to be supporting many students or as a one-on-one -on -one special education paraprofessional that will mainly support one student so just making sure that you have a clear understanding of what you are going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis before you start the job right and even after you start the job and and you're not you thought you were clear but you're not really doing what you thought you would be doing asking for clarification asking for a better understanding of you know what you will be doing on a daily basis for some paraprofessionals certain days look a little different depending on where you're needed but most times you should have a clear understanding of what your job is going to be like on a day-to-day basis right so tip number two is one of my most important tips is making sure that you understand your limitations as a paraprofessional as paraprofessionals we're given lots of responsibilities which is great for those of us especially for those of us who want to be teachers it's awesome the responsibilities that we are given right especially because we're not certified teachers and so that's awesome that we're entrusted with certain duties and responsibilities and things like that however we also have to understand our limitations there are just certain things that are just going to be above our pay grade above our job role we have to know that there are certain decisions that we cannot make we can't take matters into our own hands we can't take over the classroom we can't do any of that we have to remember that we are there to provide support we are not there to play the role or fill the shoes of a certified teacher because we're not certified teachers. We are educated, a lot of us are very educated paraprofessionals, but we are not, the fact still remains that we are not certified teachers. So there are just certain decisions that we cannot make and there are just certain matters that just have to be left up to the certified teacher. So you wanna be very careful not to make decisions that you're not supposed to make, not to, um, you know, tell the students that they can do things that, you know, the teacher wouldn't want them to do. You just have to really be very careful and make sure that you are consulting the teachers whenever you um, want to tell a student to do a certain thing or, you know, just whenever you are involved with making maybe certain smaller decisions, just always making sure that you are consulting the teacher and letting the teacher know what's what and not just making your own decisions and treating it as though it's your class, your classroom and all that stuff. So knowing your limitations and not trying to step outside of those. Tip number three, ask for what you need and ask for assistance when you need it. And don't be afraid to do that. That is something that I am learning and it's been a bit of a struggle. If I'm being honest, it's been a bit of a struggle this year asking for what I need now, most of you know that I did go to college. I got a bachelor's degree in English. Now I'm in school for my master's. However, there are certain things that I don't know. There are certain things that I don't remember. There are things that teachers don't know. There are certain things that teachers have to refresh their memories on. And that is okay. So I found in math specifically this year, working with fourth grade, there's a lot of things that I don't remember. There are things that are being taught differently than how they were taught to me years ago. And so I've had to ask for answer keys. I've had to ask to be shown how to uh, reinforce a certain skill. I've had to ask um, for, you know, tips on how to help students, you know, achieve a certain skill. And that is okay. If we're going to be there to provide support, then it's important that we have the tools, the resources, the knowledge that's going to help us be able to provide that support. If we don't have those things, then it's counterproductive. It's counterproductive for us to work with children not really knowing how 
to help them, you know? And so I've really had to like advocate for myself and make sure that I speak up if it's something that I'm just not clear on, something I don't understand, something I'm gonna need some assistance with. And that is okay. I've learned to be okay with that because there is nothing wrong with that. I am not a teacher yet. And there are just certain things that I won't know or certain things, like I said, that I will need to refresh my memory on. And that is just simply okay teachers that have been teaching for a while of course they know the curriculum like the back of their hand they know different things from just teaching it for so long and i mean i would hope so right but that's not the case for us a lot of us have never even worked in a school system before a lot of us have never worked with children before it'll be your first time if you're new to working in a school system if you're new to being a paraprofessional so that is okay, don't beat yourself up. I'm even having to learn to be okay with asking for what I need and asking for support when I need support. So um, don't be afraid. And again, that's just something that I've had to constantly remind myself as well. Tip number four, always communicate. So this is very important. I am very big on communication, guys. Like I am very big on communication. I will get frustrated if things are not communicated to me. Um, so yeah, definitely make sure that you are communicating well, right? Effective communication is very important, especially when you are working with other adults, when you're working with children, it's very important that you know how to effectively communicate. Again, if there are things that you're not comfortable with, if there are things that you don't know, communicate that because People are not going to know that you need help, that you need support, that you need whatever it is that you need if you don't communicate that. So making sure that you communicate when you need help, when you need support, and then just communicating about, say, if you're going to be absent, you know, giving the teachers a heads up, especially in my case, because I do small group uh, testing for those students who get um, small group testing accommodations. So giving the teachers a head up, a heads up on days that they have tests. Um, just communicating whatever it is that you know is going to be important for you to communicate about. If something happens with a with a student and say a teacher is not around, making sure you communicate what happened to the teacher so that the teacher can then make the final decision about what needs to happen. So it's just in any job, communication is just going to be important, right? Communication is important in any job, any field, does not matter. Just making sure that you are communicating what needs to be communicated and everything should be good because you don't ever want to be aware that something happened or know that something happened and not share that information with teachers. A lot of times, because I do lunch duty, there are things that happen in the cafeteria that I will have to then go and communicate to either admin, so the office, or either to teachers. Um, sometimes there are things that happen in the morning when I do bus duty and car duty, having to communicate that to the office. So. And like I said, in any job, you're going to have to communicate. And so just may as well get used to it. <laughs> Tip number five is last, but definitely not least. And again, it's just the last tip that I'm going to be giving you guys in this video. I will be providing more tips as I continue working as a paraprofessional. But this one is always remain positive and professional. There, there will be some hard days, if I'm being honest. I've had some very hard days as a paraprofessional when I become a teacher. I know that that's gonna be even more true. <laughs> but I have to always remember and remind myself no matter what, to always remain positive, to always remain professional. These are kids that we're working with. And so we want to make sure that we are setting a positive example for these kids. So being mindful of what we say and how we say them, being mindful of how we act and how we handle certain situations, all that's gonna be very important because there are kids that are gonna be watching us and seeing how we act and how how we respond to certain things and so it's very important you're going to be working with many adults um, around the school 
as a paraprofessional, as a teacher. So, you know, making sure that you remain positive when interacting and working with um, adults. I always say that that's probably the challenge, the most challenging part of the job is working with the adults. I think working with the kids um, is easier, <laughs> you know, and it's crazy because you probably wouldn't think that, but and reality that's what it is for me at least you know the hardest part about working as a paraprofessional is you know probably working with the adults there are so many different personalities and you know just the way certain teachers handle things versus how other teachers handle and so you know you just want to make sure that no matter what through all of that that you are remaining positive and professional no matter what and guys, I actually have a sixth tip. So this tip was kind of added last minute a while ago when I sat down to write these tips. And so that's probably why I didn't think about it, but I'm glad that I went back to look at my list. So tip number six is to look at your experience as an opportunity to grow, especially if you're looking to be a teacher. So you want to use this as an opportunity to grow working as a paraprofessional. So ask questions about different things that you know are going to be helpful for you when you become a teacher. Teachers do not mind, most of them anyways, do not mind sharing their experience or tips or even resources, different things that they've learned. They don't mind sharing any of that with you. Um, like I said, most of them don't anyways. And so asking questions about different things, um, really paying attention to how certain teachers teach, how they manage their classrooms. You know, this is pretty much your um, experience, right? You're getting some experience. Now, I know student teaching and working as a paraprofessional, like student teaching is supposed to really prepare you. But honestly, I kind of feel like I'm getting probably just as much, if not more experience working as a paraprofessional than I will as a student teacher because, um, you know, because like I said, I've been doing it for like three school years now and um, I'm learning so much and I've been, this is my second school that I'm working at. So the school I currently work at is my second school that I'm working at. Um, this is my second position that I'm working as a paraprofessional. And so I have gotten quite a bit of experience already, you know, just being able to work with different students and just watching how other students teachers teach and manage their classrooms. And so you really want to use it as an opportunity to grow. Take advantage of this time. This is like your training, right? Your training. That's how I look at it anyways. I look at it as I'm training to be a teacher. Obviously, I'm doing my job as a paraprofessional and not trying to feel, like I said, not trying to fill the role of a certified teacher. I can practice that when I start student teaching. But you get what I'm saying. Like this is my training learning a lot so i'm taking advantage of it and you guys should too because it's going to be really beneficial for you when you start student teaching and when you become a teacher so yeah those are all of my tips i hope that you guys found them helpful um if there's anything else that you would like to know about paraprofessionals that i did not answer please um, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. And yeah, guys, I will be back with more paraprofessional videos soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you back here next time.